Here it either lives or dies. That seems to be the pain sticking up. It is high time that I continue working on this hair and actually finish this wrought iron bodied French cross pin that I got right here. This is the original one that I made first, the one that I rejected because of that little split is in there. I'm not too worried about that anymore. What it needs right now is a steel face and a steel pin, everything forged welded on and then it can be finished. You can punch the hole later if you want to do that. I'd rather do it in there already, but leave it undersized so that by the time everything is forged welded on, you can still ship the eye to where it needs to be. If you make it too large too quickly, if you make it to the final size already, it will deform and you can no longer correct it. Now I still got all freedom and everything to correct it. The hammer is in the fire, it's going to heat up and then we can take it out at a forge welding heat and then bring it to the anvil where we have this 1045 face with the gnarly teeth that should hold on to it and then we can bring that combination to the fire and forge weld it. I recommend to apply a little bit of borax by the time you attach this thing.
and drop ports. So here is what we got before the quench. Actually, I should get the other one as well. There we go. You can see there is a considerable difference in size, even though they both started roughly the same size. And this really is due for anyone who hasn't followed it. I had to shrink it down significantly in order to turn it into a usable hammer because we did have a little bit of a problem with the steel that is forged welded on the face and that was this side where there was a crack in the steel and not in the forge weld. The forge weld had nothing. Same with the peen. There's nothing wrong with the peen. And now for once I got one with a very long peen and we're gonna do a little bit of a look closer at it and see where a problem area could be. This one survived I'm not sure this one is going to survive. I, I simply don't know. The colors and everything on it looked good. You can see a bit of an oxidation difference where the iron has a different color than the steel. This is 1045 or a 1045 equivalent. And if we take a close look, we know that there's a crack in here from the fibrous iron. If this were a steel hammer, this would have been really bad, but it's just the grainy nature of the iron. This little hammer's got the same thing there. And I know that is not much of an issue. Of course, it would have been prettier if it weren't there, but here it is. The collar on it is 
good and I have heated up and let it cool down slowly a couple of times and look if I can see temperature differences, see if the face or any other part seems to have a much darker spot or a much hotter spot. I didn't see that. There was a clear difference though between the oxidation color but then again that is what you see with the mask is steel as well so that is not, nothing out of the ordinary. So all that stuff that doesn't stand out very much and if the discoloration is not present, if there's discoloration that's not good. In temperature I mean not so much in discoloration in, in the oxidation in the way that that colors. If this thing is going to fail it could be completely around, it could happen around the entire periphery because we got that line here still as well. It's not very deep. This one is still very clear as well. This one is very clear as well right over here. And this one right on top here. It's not a very, not a very deep ridge really. Maybe it looks a bit deeper on camera but this is a line that I wasn't able to get out very well and I didn't want to continue forging on it because the risk you do if you squeeze it like this, if it's not good, it might pop it off. It shouldn't, but it might pop, pop it off because the iron is softer than the steel is and it squishes it around in a very different way. It has a very different squish rate, if you will. It, it displaces at a different rate and that can rip the face off. So that is something to pay attention to. The teeth and everything that right here, they've disappeared, so that's good. Then if you look at the peen, that all seems to be fine. So here are two remainders of where I cut the teeth. The little, you know, little cavities that we got there. If it is going to pop off, it's probably going to be along this line. If it's going to do anything. The sides look good, don't see any remainder of the weld on there. Same here, got nothing. Though here, I didn't clean this side very much because this is the bottom side and the more material I remove, the lighter and smaller this thing is going to become. I did try to take out that weld, but if I want to take out what is in here, it means more forge welding heats and it means that I thin this down even more and I don't want to bring this down because this is about, you know, that cross section there is about 3 8 or so, 10 mil, and I want to conserve that. A uh, little bit of a spot there, oh sorry, <laughs> framing. A little bit of a spot there, a little bit of a spot there, a little bit of a spot there. If it's going to go, it's probably going to be around that area. And we're going to do the same heat treatment, we're going to do the same quench as on this hammer. We're going to quench it in water. And the reason I want to do it in water is because, you know, this is 1045. It's a water quench steel, you quench it in water. You can do it in oil. I don't have any oil at the moment, so that doesn't help. I want to be able to do it in water because that's what they did with the old hammers and anvils. And I want to be able to get good at that. And every time I, you know, cheat myself out of that, do something else, I'm going to get good at that rather than try and get good at this. I'm simply going to bring this up to what I perceive as a cherry red color or ish. And then we're going to quench it in the water and we're going to see what it does and hopefully no weird stuff, no cracks, nothing, the thing stays together and I got you know, a nice usable tool and then we can wait and actually stamp it. This one I didn't stamp because we etched it. This one I am probably not going to etch because you know if I etch it it's going to decrease the weight and this one's got I think it's around two pounds at least so um, this one's a lot lighter, this one's more towards one pound, this one's towards two pounds. You know, so I got something heavy to hit with. All right, so let's give that a shot and see if this thing explodes on me. Here, this is good. This is an even transition. You don't see a very distinct transition between where the face is and where the body is. So that should indicate that the weld is going to be able to hold it. Ooh, very spooky. We turn the lights off. So I can actually see the colors a lot better, because look! Oh, you won't be able to see much, but... Alright, I'd say it's time to take a brush and dunk it in the water. Alright, here it either lives or dies. I did hear a pop in the beginning. Probably steam, but nothing now. Oh boy. 
I don't feel any tingling or sharp transitions or anything. I'm moving it still. And I'd say it's been long enough that I can actually turn the lights back on. I'm going to put my hand in the water and actually feel if the hammer is still warm. And the hammer is still a little bit warm. And I already had a sneak peek with my hands actually, but uh, that's the nice thing about murky water. Alright, we're going to take a very tiny bit of a look at it. Where is it? Oh, 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 there it is. Ay, caramba. That seems to be the peen sticking up. Seems to be there. And that seems to be the face. Oh, it seems to have survived. Oh my goodness, where's the file? We could test that. Because now, if this has been successful, I mean, uh, don't do that, but uh, it's on there, mate. And it's hard. It is hard as. It worked. That seems to be on there. been tempered to about a straw yellow color and now the hammer is essentially finished. I could do some further finishing on the side to clean it up which I don't want to do because I want this hammer to be as heavy as it can possibly be without removing too much material. It doesn't harm it if I leave it like this and I do like the rougher appearance and whatever grain is in there in the iron is going to present itself later on anyway. I have already done some work to my shaft but don't worry I'll share the final strokes with you before we finish this off. Another thing that I've made, that is the wedge. And the way I do this is very simple. Taper this, I forge that, and then I take the angle grinder with a rather wide cutting disc, and I grind in these grooves. This hammer has yet to be fully tested and you know prove itself that the welds will hold over time. It survived the quench, but that doesn't mean it will survive you know, the handwork. This is only the first test, the second test is actually using it. So I'm not going to stick my good wood into a gnarly hole of which I don't know is going to last. So there's no point in wasting your good wood. Save that for the good times. I, I guess around two pounds. And that's about right, it weighs 944 grams. Now for those of you who do not understand metric, that is... Yeah, there we go. That is two pounds and 1.2 ounces. Two pounds and 1.2 ounces. So I'm just gonna round it down to two pounds because I gotta do a little bit of polishing on this face and I gotta polish my peen a little bit more uh, before I wanna use it. Uh, and uh, so I'll round it down to two pounds. I'm gonna mark it with two pounds. in. Work for somewhere in the middle. Gonna go a bit further. And you can see it's starting to go in. That should keep it in place. All right, can now to remove a little bit of that excess, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit prettier. All right, let's try it out on some premium material. That is, of course, rebar.
And as always, I forget to press the freaking record button. This anvil, this angle. Okay, then now the important bit, and that is of course the key ring itself. Of course, these you can forge yourself too if you want to do that. Uh, but it is a, an important piece. Now, of course, I need to do uh, do something with the peen and do some uh, proper peening. This is a bit of iron that suspiciously looked like it could be turned into a knife, but this is iron, so it wouldn't be good for a for a good knife. Uh, we're just going to simply peen that out. It actually is not the right orientation to do this, uh, to, to really peen like that. I wouldn't normally do that, but I need something to peen, so we're gonna we're gonna peen this out because I feel like it. Let's give it more of a proper test now with some rebar. Very good, I'm very happy with that. So 
it's unlikely that that pin is going to come off after that. If, if, if it's going to come off, it would have come off already, but it didn't. So this hammer can actually be put into service. It's going to be very good. So what I'm simply going to do now is I'm going to take it to the fire. I'm going to chart a little bit to bring out that grain a little bit, make it a bit purdier and then finish it, oil it. My gas burner was out and the fire was actually fairly hot, so it got dark much faster than I anticipated, which is okay, it will wear it down over time. Here you can really see the shrinkage really well between the two. I really had to sacrifice so much in order to get this hammer to be a usable hammer, but fortun fortunately it did. Despite you know losing some of its face, but it's it's uh, it's still there. So this one should have gone like this one went, but that didn't happen unfortunately. And I really like it. I'm not really fond of the French type of hammer, and the reason for that is is because of that asymmetry. And with a typical French hammer, this is not your typical French hammer. Um, they usually have a rectangular face, and this one is square-ish. Call it square-ish. I won't say it's exactly square, but call it square-ish. This one is a lot more rectangular than what I wanted it to come out, but that would mean I have to remove even more material and it would mean it would come out even lighter, which is not the point, so I left it there, so by, by accident it came out rectangular, because I had to remove from these sides. With this one I didn't. I think it's cool that you can actually still see where the welds are in this case, and that it holds hold on to it and I really like that. I really enjoyed this journey it's it's fascinating to going from the point where you know the faces pop off to the point that now they actually stick on there, they stay on there, you can actually use them and uh, use them in my forging and I can use this one for uh, for a special project that has been in my workshop for, uh, for a while but uh, I didn't feel the time was right to actually uh, start that yet. I did, I did want to start it but then starting it, and of course it involves iron, but you'll see that in, in, in the next coming videos. Uh, it's gonna involve some iron that I've received from, from Germany. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun using this one. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.